been listening to you and really interested in, you know, what's going on, what you got going on in Cleveland and things like that. And uh, so my goal, just to let you know, my goal right now is to be full time. I want to go full time. Okay. I want to first and foremost retire my wife. All right, brother. What is going on, man? What's going on, James? How you doing, buddy? Not much, man. Thank you for uh, hopping on the call. Um, your name's Lionel, correct? Yeah, Lionel. Mm -hmm. All right, Lionel. This is about you, dude. So let's let's start things off with you, man. Whatever you know, let me know you. Let me know what you want to do. What are we talking about? Awesome. Well, yeah, man. I became a big fan of yours just recently. Uh, a buddy of mine in Indiana had uh, referred me over to you. So. Um, you know, I do now I do real estate investing. I my, you know, just like two minute background on myself. I've been self-employed for 15 years doing IT, got into real estate investing in 2017 here in Los Angeles, California, and uh, found out about, you know, what was going on in, in Indy just last year and started doing some investing over there. Picked okay. up a little family home. You know, now I got a, I'm doing a flip right now. I'm actually purchasing my second single family over there but uh been listening to you and really interested in you know what's going on what you got going on in Cleveland and things like that and uh so my goal just to let you know my goal right now is to be full-time I want to go full-time okay. I want to first and foremost retire my wife we just had our second child congrats uh, I just had my second child this year awesome man awesome I love that that's right <laughs> yeah it kind of you know kind of struck struck a, a bug with this we want to kind of have some more so we're <laughs> we're looking okay. like you know we're looking to get out of LA we're, we're part of that crew escape LA crew <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of you guys right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely so you know we're looking back uh in Indy like we like Carmel area and things like that but you know we just wanted to uh really hone down on some strategies um some partnerships on how we can you know scale up our uh, you know, cash flow here for, you know, single family, multifamily. I love multifamily, by the way. I love that. Tries and quads are like my thing. Okay. But stuff like that, you know, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really my, you know, my whole goal here is to really increase my cash flow on a quick, I, I'm a fast mover, by the way. Okay. I like to move quick. I think some of the guys in Indy, they move a little slow for me, <laughs> okay. but it's okay. You know, it's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm with it. All right, let me try to uh, <clears throat> digest and get some confirmation on some things. It's like, um, obviously, whatever I suggest, of course, is just a suggestion, right? Based on like what you're telling me about yourself. But like, I like to right. like really narrow down on like you and what's going on and like what you got going for yourself, right? So I yeah. think like with any business, because that's what I mean, any fucking asshole could buy a rental property, right? But like, what's, right. what's like your competitive advantage? Like, what do you have going for yourself? So I guess the first thing and, you know, financing, right? Let's talk there, right? So you said you're right. self-employed, but you're in IT. So like, I assume people hire you like under like six month or year engineering type contracts. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And you're, are you still doing that? I still do it okay. less because I'm focusing a lot on the real estate, but I still have my key clients that have been, you know, thank God, great for the last, you know, five to six years with me. And I, you know, they're on retainers and things like that. So yeah, I'm still doing that. Okay. So what type, like, I guess my first question in regards to that, right. Cause like, as I said, anyone could buy a rental, right? Anyone could do that. But like, not a lot of people can run an IT business like you. So you have like a skill, you have a talent, and it sounds like I'm, I'm guessing it's a high income talent. Yes. Like what yeah. kind of money do you make doing that? Uh, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's great. It's, I can pick up, gosh, it really depends, you know, but I can pick up a client and lock them in for five years at like anywhere from 80 to a hundred thousand a year. And you could pick up like a handful of clients a year and stuff. Yeah. Right. So like, you're still going to like continue to do that. Yeah. 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 Okay, I kind of want to not know. do that, bro. Like, <laughs> they are, yeah. like I, the yeah. first thing I want to set up for you though, is like, let's talk about expectations. Like, it sounds like you're like over the last like five years, which, like, are you averaging like an income of half a million to a million doing your IT business? I used to, not anymore, not okay. anymore. I really scaled down just because, you know, it, it's, it's become mostly me. I had some guys that were working for me, didn't quite work out, but I had to scale down because it just, it grew a little too quick. 
So now because it's just me managing it, I just have my top clients that I'm dealing with. And so which gives me a lot more free time to, you know, look into the investing and things like that. Okay. Now, I don't want to like sound like I'm like, yo, bro, fuck real estate or anything like that. Because it's not where I'm going with this. But like, I just like, from the outside looking in, right? Like, you have an incredible skill that and I say it's incredible because that pays a lot of money, right? That is something yeah. that not a lot of people could do, right? So like the first thing when I start working with an investor is like, yo, man, what is like like your competitive advantage, your skill? Like you have that. Like if you're just like a, I don't know, just a run of the mill dude that's doing a job that most anybody could do, you know, like mm-hmm. real estate might be cool. But like I think what you should focus on is real estate as a um, extension of your mm-hmm. like whole financial plan. Cause like there are not a lot of people that I work with on a daily basis who live in LA and are making a million dollars a year in profit off of buying these rental properties. Right. So like, right. we should start there. Right. So like you are crushing it in that business. So like, I, I would always want to see you continue rocking that what about your wife what does she currently do because I, I i love the idea of retiring your wife that's that's pretty yeah. cool my wife was a nurse she got to retire uh because of real estate so like i'm not saying like yo let's not do real estate i just like really want to set the precipice of like the plan we developed for you like to be like yo let's always continue doing this because like i don't want you to think that like you'll make more money buying properties in cleveland than you're currently making because i dude you'd have to buy a lot of property Right. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I get that. You'd have have to run a really, 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 really big business. Not to mention your business is it, which like, I'm not an it guy, obviously. So if I'm talking out of, out of step here, let me know. But like with real estate, right? Like we have properties, we have tenants, we have toilets, we have roofs. I mean, there's like a lot of physical infrastructure, a lot of work that has to get done, like physically, like actually touching the home. Right. Yeah. With, With your it business. Right. I feel like there's probably not like a, a large outlay of, of products you need to buy, right? It's mainly just like That's services. That's why it's, it's pays all up so here, well. right? Yes, right. yes. Okay. It's all so, service-based, hourly rates. Okay, so like just to stay on the same vein, just remember like to get to the point where you were making that kind of money on real estate, like you said, right. you were making more money doing IT because you scaled up too quickly, right? There's a lot. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more moving parts to an actual real estate portfolio of that size than, than what you had, right? It sounds like that's a very smooth, easy business comparatively. So I just want to like yeah. set that up too. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea to invest out here. I'm just saying like, you know, let's put it in the proper perspective of, of where we're at, of, of what you're doing. What does the right. wife do? What's the wife do? So she, funny enough, she's a bank manager at okay. uh, JP Morgan Chase. <laughs> and she's, uh, you know, she's been there for seven years. I mean, you know, she loves it. But now that, you know, with the... What really changed things a lot for us is 2020, right? Okay. The pan- whole pandemic situation. We have an older child. She's, uh, you know, going to school now. It's Zoom school. And then we have the, the, the little guy. So, you know, it's kind of hard for her to, you know, and it is, I don't know if it makes sense for us to, you know, hire daycare and do things like that. So based on her income, but she, you know, that's what she does. She's a bank manager. Okay. So with all that said, the plan, first retire her. Second, move some money into the real estate investment space. Right. What, uh, like, what type of properties are you thinking about? Like, right now you're doing, you're doing flips in Indy, right? Mm-hmm. I guess my first question is why? Why are you doing flips? Uh, you know what? I went out there looking for cash flow. Okay. That's literally what I went for. Bought a single family that I got it for 50K and it was, you know, it, it, the rents over there were 800 bucks which is crazy. You can't find that here. And then I got talked in with a, a buddy of mine to do some flips. So we started looking at some flips, had a couple that we were working on one that's going through right now. Um, and you know, it just, it just, I like to be diverse and try different things. You know, I, I, I want to master what it is that I'm doing in real estate. So that's kind of the reason why I went into the flips, but I think all in all, I'm, I'm still looking for, you know, properties that cash flow. That's kind of my thing. I would say, I would say yeah, that's where I would see you going. Cause like to me, I would, if I were you, I would stop flipping houses immediately, especially uh, in Indiana. I would totally stop that. That that business to me for you makes no sense, right? Because Mm. A, I think the amount of, first of all, it's, it's fucking hard to flip houses, right? Like it's like, I know fucking HGTV is like 
Tarek and Christina, right? Like they're out right, there right. and they're like, oh, we made like fucking a hundred grand. And like, they fucking <laughs> wrap the show up in 30 goddamn minutes. And I was like, fuck, dude, I can make a hundred grand in 30 minutes. What right, you don't exactly. understand about flipping houses where what most people don't understand is like, do like you get the big paydays? Yeah. But like, you have to understand, dude, you have to like do due diligence and, and go through the process on like, like freaking 30, 40, 50 deals before like right. the one that falls into place. And you got to do all that due diligence. And there's only two ways to do due diligence, bro. It's either you do the due diligence or you pay somebody the due diligence. Right. So by the time right. like you get that one payday, like there's so many other costs. And what I'm trying to say is for you, like your competitive advantage is making a high dollar per hour doing the IT, IT stuff. I don't think you'll ever be able to uh, leverage enough stuff to make a similar dollar per hour or outlay rate doing flips. Right. So I, I would think like you're trying to trade in a higher income job for a lower income job. It's like your wife's the mm -hmm. bank manager, but she's like, fuck being a bank manager. I want to be right. the bank, the bank fucking janitor, right? That would make no right. sense, right? So like <laughs> I would, I would immediately stop flipping houses. And if I was going to flip houses, if I were you, seeing as you're making the kind of money you're making, I would probably try to flip them in LA because A, you could probably get things done comparatively cheaper because you have a network out there. B, you mm -hmm. could physically go on site. C, you know the market better because you live there. And then D, uh, the spreads are bigger and it's a flip. It's like, it's short term. So I'm assuming you have a large amount of savings based on your income. So like you're not short on money. You don't have to do a $100,000 flip because you have enough money to do a flip where maybe the exit price is a million and then the spread will be bigger. So lower risk, yeah. bigger payday. So if I were you, I would never do an out-of-state flip again. For you, it makes no sense. Now, if I'm talking to somebody else, we could be having a different conversation. But for you, I think that would be a, a bad business, a low-income mm -hmm. business. So I think, yeah, the rentals make sense. Uh, and as far as the rentals go, what I think would make sense would be like your lower risk rentals where the idea is like – long-term cash flow like let's get quality investments where we can spread our money out not have to put a like all cash deals down and like let's get them tenants to pay off the mortgages dude like yes. we could pick up like i assume you have a, a mortgage on the home you and your wife own yes yeah mm -hmm. okay so that uh in both your names are on it yeah no funny enough this one is just in her name we i have we have two homes the other one is now a rental uh okay. not too far from here that's in my name okay so, so if we separate that out right uh, mm -hmm. You get 20 total mortgages, 10 in your name, 10 in her name. So we already took care of two. So you have nine and nine. So you could do 18 mortgages, right? So like, what if we targeted like just easy math, right? Like $1,800,000 investments and you just take the down payments, which would be 25K. So 25,000 times 18. I mean, you could be at 450,000 targeting these low risk investments and then just let them tenants quadruple that money for you, dude. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a $1.8 million portfolio. Like that's something it's passive, not a lot of moving parts, not a lot of risk. Uh, it doesn't take away from, in my opinion, something you can do. That's a higher, uh, has a higher ceiling, higher dollar per hour work, but yet you're still quadrupling your money for retirement. Like I right. would be aiming. And then of course there's cash flow along the way. And you know, I mean, technically, yeah, real estate technically historically appreciates, but like, I don't want to tell a guy from California to come to Cleveland for appreciation. <laughs> that would be disingenuous. Yeah. But right, you know, right. it, it, they, some of these properties probably still will be worth more uh, 30 years from now than they are today. But like, you know, this ain't the appreciation market, obviously. So that's gotcha, what I would yeah. do. And I'm not saying like all the deals got to be a hundred thousand dollar deal. I just do that for easy math. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, that's what I would focus on. So like, Flips obviously would be out. I wouldn't, if I were you, I would not try to do bur deals or anything of that nature. Cause like, why, why do you need to do a bird deal? Like what's the point of taking on the risk and outlaying all the cash in a new market? When I feel like you're flush with cash, you just need to get your cash to work for you uh, passively. So like, right. I wouldn't even worry about bird deals. I don't like, what's the point of a bird deal in your situation? Like, I, I think if you have the 25 K to drop on these quality investments, just drop it and let the tenant quadruple it while you get cash flow along the way. That's what mm -hmm. I would do based upon the very short synopsis of what you've told me about your life situation. But again, dude, it's totally up to you. Right. Like that's my, that's just my thought off the bat. Like, what do you think about that? Where do you think I'm going the right way? You think I'm going the wrong way? Like, what do you think? You know what? I love that. I think, and that's kind of what I came to, to, 
I already was kind of planning because I looked at some of your episodes of, of, of deals and like literally like you had one on Greenhurst, one on Parkhurst that I just was like, that's perfect. And the same strategy uh, when it comes to, you know, putting, purchasing it with a mortgage, I just kind of got into that recently and I'm totally game with that. I think that's great. I think, but I would also like to do a little bit of bird deals and flips just because, you know, I, I like to be active a little bit. <laughs> that's just, that's just my own personal preference. And um, I, I like to create multiple streams. And I feel like that if I can do, like if I'm purchasing a couple properties, you know, with a mortgage, I could also at the same time, maybe do one flip that's going to pay out four months later and things like that. I think it's just because I like to move around a lot. But, uh, and, and also I still, I have the time right now, especially with this whole COVID thing, everything's been kind of slow and I've been working from home. So, you know, I wouldn't mind open my, open some, opening some doors to that. But uh, I'm, I'm literally right on board when it comes to like, especially the criteria of the rental, higher grade rentals, mm -hmm. because I feel like, you know, even in Indy, some of the rentals I've been offered or the, the properties I've been offered have been, ugh, you know, they've been a little lower class. Um, and, you know, I've had to deal with it. Uh, the one property I had actually had some bullet holes in it that had to fix. So, you know, I kind of want to avoid those types of areas. Sure, sure. So, so but yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Indy real quick. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, you said the dudes in Indy move slow, like, all right, talk to me about like what's working in Indy, what's not working in Indy. So I've, you know, that's a good one. So I think what's working, I'm actually getting a lot of deals, funny, funny enough from like wholesalers, I'm getting some deals from wholesalers. And as long as they're not gouging me on that wholesale price, um, some of those deals have, seem to be working for cash flow. Um, the flips have not really been working. I've probably had... I mean, I, I worked with a bunch of different hard money guys and they're looking at me like, what the heck's going on? We've had different flips. We've had slowdowns because of appraisals or, you know, changing in terms at the last minute. And maybe that just has to do with 2020 and the whole pandemic, but the flips have not really been working. Uh, we finally got one now that's at the final stage that's getting ready to happen. And it's a really good deal. Um, it's just been slow. It's been six months trying to just get there. You know what I mean? What was just, the just, acquisition press? Uh, for this one, so it's a duplex. Con we're going to convert it into townhomes. The acquisition price. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, it was one ten. Okay. Was one ten. We're going to put one hundred and sixty into it, and those uh, can sell for about one hundred and eighty to two hundred each a piece. Yeah. All right. So you're all in for two seventy, and then. Mm -hmm. The ARV would be 360. Right. All right. So then you pay in probably like what a 7% commission on that. So about 25K in commission. Yeah. 25K in commission, 270 in repairs. Did you pay for the money? Yeah. Yeah. How much this did you is pay the, for the money. Um, these guys got me at 9%. Monthly 9. or 9. annually? Annually? Annual. Annual. Okay, that's pretty cheap. So yeah, you borrow. Did you borrow all, all three sixty or, or do you yeah. have like? Okay, so so times nine percent. You're about six months into the deal, so you got money cost of like what fifteen k ish. Mm-hmm. Okay. So plus whatever fees they had, they have a bunch of little fees, of course, hard money, loan processing, and all that stuff. Like points and whatnot up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Besides the 15K, about how much money you think you paid for the money? Uh, about 20. Okay, so 20 total for the money or uh, 20 plus 15? Uh, 20 total. Okay, all right, so another 5K, all right. Another five, yeah. All right, I'm just trying to work with you here on this. these numbers. Just want to see what we're looking at. So two, 360,000 minus 270,000 minus... 45,000. So you're looking at a $45,000 profit. Yep. Okay. And then this is been in the works for six months. Like you've already done the rehab and like you're about to sell it to somebody now. It's about to close. No, that's, okay. no, that's what I'm saying. We're barely getting to the close. Close is next week. Okay. So, but you've, the rehab, this is the close on the acquisition. On the acquisition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's yeah. your like rehab time? Well, first of all, why did it take six months to? Close? Oh my gosh! <laughs> why did it yeah? Why it shouldn't take six months to close the deal? It was a nightmare. I, you know, honestly, I, it's hard to even tell you. It's like so we had um, 
we went through, I had to pay for four appraisals. So that's another cost. Well, four actually, hold, hold on one second. I calculated your money costs, assuming though that uh, this the appraisal. deal. No. All right. When I did your money costs, right? You said 9.9%, right? So you right. borrowed all the money. So that's 360K, 9.9%. Okay. That would be 35K annually, but we cut it down to about 20K because I thought everything was wrapping up in the six month period. If you're six months, so mm -hmm. that, that profit I gave you, it looks like you're going to make about 45 G's. That right. assumes you only paid about 25 or about 20 K for the, the money, but you're not, dude, you're going to pay about 35 or 40 K. So we got to tack another 20 on there. Cause if you took you six months to get this far, you haven't even started the renovation, right. let alone selling it to the next guy. There's no way that's taken less than six months. So you right. got to understand that like this particular deal, you're looking at a year and 25 K, which is like $2,000 a month. Right? right. So now that we have the right numbers though, now let's talk. Why is it taking six months to get to this point? So many different issues. Mostly I would say appraisals. Um, we, I did four appraisals, crazy enough. I've never even seen this before. Lenders, our investors are looking to work with you. Send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com to be part of our referral network. Where every appraisal came back incorrect, the, 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 the lender didn't like it or, or the bank didn't like it or whoever, um, because they didn't understand the, that we were doing a conversion, right? They first appraised it incorrectly because they thought it was just going to be sold completely as is. Um, and we finally got down to the right appraisal, which was the fourth one. Um, they said there wasn't enough profit in the deal because of the comps. The comps had dropped. But the property right across the street, they did the same exact deal. And, you know, those were selling for 200, 200 each. So then we went back to the original appraisal. And each appraisal took weeks. So that's, what, that's, what, that's the, the bulk of the holdup. I think you're going to lose money on this deal, bro. I don't think you're going to make money. I kind of feel like that too. And it, it's funny that came, we had this conversation Friday and I said, you know, what? I feel like I, I, at this point I should just pull out. Like I haven't. You should. To, yeah. You should like, look, <clears throat> well, let, we're talking about the house flipping business, right? Cause again, you're in a business like, it sounds like this might not even necessarily be like a monetary thing for you. I, I feel like you just really like want to dig your teeth into a business. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go back to dude, if you're going to house flip, what, why do you want a house flip uh, out of state? Why don't you want a house flip at home? Like what is, cause like the California market, yes, it's expensive, right? Right. Yes, it doesn't cash flow, but what does cash flow and the cost have to do with a house flip? You're in, you're out. There's no tenant. Like right. why do it out of state lines? Cause look, dude, I don't think you're, I think you're gonna lose money on this deal, okay? You mm -hmm. bought, you're trying to buy it for 110. 160 is your estimated rehab cost. That puts you all in at 270. We determined you paid roughly 20K for the money thus far for the first six months. So I assume right. based on the same annualized uh, interest rate, you're going to pay approximately another 20 on the next six months. Who the fuck knows how much longer mm -hmm. than that it's going to go because you should be able to close the deal in 14 days, uh, 10 if it's cash, right? So at least another 20, right? So that's 40 for the money, 270 uh, for the cost of acquisition and rehab, plus another 25 for the real estate agent. That takes you down to 25K if you sold it in a year, not to mention title companies got to get paid. So let's throw another 1% there. That's another 3,600. So that takes you down, let's just call it uh, 4K just for easy math. That takes you down to 21K and that's based upon you're hitting it in six months, right? You're doing the full rehab and selling it to somebody else in six months, but you had to do four appraisals on the first one because the yep. zoning's all fucked up. I don't think that's an issue uh, that's going away, bro. Like right. now you're going to try to sell, and, and dude, you're not even trying to sell one fucking house. You're going to try to sell two houses now. So <laughs> you had to deal yeah. with, with two, you have to sell it twice. And right now right. where I'm looking at it, if everything goes perfect for you, you're only going to make, uh, 21k if everything goes perfect on both of those deals and the first deal it's been really horrible up, up till this far like right. $160,000 by the way in, in Indiana like mm -hmm. 
that's a huge, huge renovation, dude. That is like, you're pretty much like tearing it down, doing it. Like, that's a lot of money, dude. Like, these guys that you're working with, like, like how much, like, do you know about their construction business? Because, like, dude, it is, like, I can't um, stress enough how big of a renovation that is. And, and like, deviations uh, from the original yeah. renovation budget happen in this business all the time on much smaller deals. So, like, conservatively uh, – well, not conservatively. Best case – yeah, but conservatively, best case scenario – you're only going to make 21 on this year long project. Right. Which is, I mean, you, you can make 21 working at McDonald's. Uh, I think that you have a very high chance of losing all profit based on the fact that that 160 could turn into 180 like that. Number one, right. Number two, that 360, which is 180, 180 can easily turn into a 170 sale, a 170 sale. Uh, the same appraisal zoning issues you had before with your hard money guys. Well, now, dude, what, what are you selling? You're selling two hot townhomes to probably uh, owner-occupied buyers that are using FHA loans, dude. You think you had a problem before? Like, you bring fucking FHA, VA loans in here, conventional loans. Like, I would like, dude. I think your odds of going in the red on this deal are probably higher than pulling off the 21K. And I think for everything you've had to do to this deal, the time, the energy, the resources, the risk, it doesn't even make sense to do a deal like this for a year right. of your life at $20,000 in profit. Like what we've done here, even if you made the 20K, this is not scalable at all, right? Right. What's the point? It's 20K, right? Like I, I think that makes, I, so I would pull out of this deal, number one. And then number two, like, if you're going to flip, just like, why? Like, all right. Well, first of all, you borrowed all that money too. Like, are you borrowing it because you don't have it in the bank or you wanted to leverage things out? I'm trying to leverage it. See my, my, yeah. The whole goal is to do multiple of these. Okay. You know? All right. So let's, let's focus on that. You have the cash, but you're trying to leverage it. The only reason a guy wants to leverage it if he has cash is because what you want to leverage it so you could scale it. This right. is not scalable. Like, right. This you can't scale this deal, right? It just wouldn't work, right? Mm -hmm. A, the deal's already not working. B, like this is just a completely unscalable uh, deal here. So I would get rid of this deal. Don't do the deal. And I would then go forward and I would flip houses only with cash, especially if you have the cash, right? A, mm -hmm. you're going to lose profitability paying the lenders. B, you're never going to get the best deals, okay? You're never right. going to get them, dude. Like- like flipping houses is so competitive. Like, all right, I flip houses, okay? But I don't flip like 30, 40, 50 houses a month, right? I feel like anybody that starts flipping houses, especially somebody who's got the cash but is 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 trying to get the the loans to scale it out, you're envisioning building this machine where you flip 30, 40, 50 houses. You flip like 500 houses a year. But dude, that's not that's not practical, bro. It's not going to happen. Like mm. on my business, right? I have a uh massive real estate business in cleveland which i'm sure you've gathered from watching all the shows right like my name yeah. is on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of probably like thousands thousands of front door have the holton wise name on it i have a, a construction crew of 60 employees they all drive holton wise trucks dude so like wow. you're driving through my town it says holton wise we buy houses on thousands of front doors signs in the yards trucks driving like i a lot of times what we buy personally too is like we'll buy like apartment buildings or some type of commercial buildings, but we buy them on main roads where we could put like billboards. Like I got this mm -hmm. one mural in this one city. It's the biggest mural in the entire city. It's massive. It's like a two-story mural, right? I specifically bought that building so I can get like the free advertising, right? Because like where wow. I'm at, like, <laughs> like my market, like a billboard on the highway, like a good highway exit, like a big billboard yeah. that would say like, yo, Holton Wise, we buy houses. That would run me like $2,000 a month. I'm like, all right, well, that's 24K a year. I'll just buy this fucking building. And now I got a free billboard, right? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, like, we do stuff like that. And then not to mention all the YouTube stuff and then direct mail. So what I'm trying to tell you is I'm spending well into the six figures annually on advertising. And I have spent millions and millions of dollars on the infrastructure to build up this brand in my market, we are now the largest landlord, scattered site landlord in my market by far. We're the biggest name in the game, but I still don't.
flip 20, 30, 40, 50 houses a month because the deal flow just isn't there in that level of scale. So mm -hmm. to that point, to go one step even further, if there is a deal available, right? I have more money, more infrastructure than deals available. So if there's a deal out there, why would a seller work with a hard money guy from out of state who's going to have to deal with appraisals and contingencies mm -hmm. versus a very well-known entity who's just paying cash. What I'm trying to say is every market has people like me. Every market's going to have people that have a bigger competitive advantage than you do um, mm -hmm. in regards to these flips because they don't, they're not paying for the money. They can make the offers contingency free. They could walk the property before they even put in their offer. They could pay more than you because they're not paying for the money. They could pay more than you because they maybe own the construction company. Like you are at a competitive disadvantage to out-of-state flipping. And if you're trying to do that level of scale, I just, it's not a recipe for a successful business because it, it just, you, you won't be able to compete and do that. So that's why I would say yeah. if you are going to flip, bro, you have the money. You have to build the pyramid from the bottom up, right? Like, can you randomly flip like one or two houses? Sure. But like, you know, things are going to go into play. But to build this like this uh, uh, machine you're trying to build, dude, mm -hmm. you have to – you can't cheat and jump into like the top of the pyramid, dog. You got to build that shit from the ground up and right. uh, build up your infrastructure. And again, that's going to take millions and millions of dollars. So my next question would be then like, I don't know, why start over, right? when you already have a business that does that with, yeah. you don't have to learn a new industry, right? Like just one other caveat that you should know about Holton Wise. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm wise, right? My partner's Holton, guy named John Holton. Uh, this mm -hmm. dude has been a general contractor for 20 years before we started this company, right? So that's, that's that ground up experience, right? Uh, so like entrenched in this, right? So our competitive advantages are there for this business. But like, if I try to start an IT consulting business, I would be destroyed by you. Right. So right. because of all that, I do not want to see you try to build a house flipping business in Indy. Uh, I don't even want to see you try to build one out here in Cleveland because you're never going to be satiated because you want to build this massive 500 flip a, a year empire. And it's, it's just not going to be possible. And if you want to do it, you got to do it in Cali. And, and you got to build the business up, dude. And like, you really need to basically start a construction business. Cause mm -hmm, I mean, the way mm -hmm. the shit is, the, the margins are so thin right now, man. Like when I do flip yeah. houses, yeah, I make, I make a lot of money every time I flip them. But like, I also have a lot of advertising out there that pays me on like the multiple facets that, I mean, like my trucks in the street make me money in many different ways. So that, right. that that's, that's, that's where I'm at with the flips. Right. So like when I do work for folks, I like to set you guys up uh, knowing exactly what to expect. Now, that said, like we do do flips with out-of-state investors, okay? And I'm going to explain it to you real quick. It, it just quick. I don't want to burn a lot of your time. But like you're typically going to be able to, to knock out like 15, 20K profits. We're going in, squeezing them in. But you have to understand, bro, you're going to need to make offers and do due diligence and do videos and do inspections on like a lot of properties. It's not like, Oh, I want to make a 20 K flip. And I just grab you one, right? Like we may have to right. go through 10, 15. And I'm not saying it would take six months to get you to the closing table, like the other deal. But like, I'm just saying like the profits are not going to be massive. They'll, they'll be small right. and it's really not, it's not scalable to that level. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah. That makes sense. And you know, it's funny enough that you say that I'm just listening to you and, and the guy that I actually got this property from, I was looking on my own, did a couple of things. It's a construction company. They put that, you know, they bought this a couple of years back. I think they had, honestly, I just found out they got it for like 70 grand. Okay. Well, see, you that's, know, it, so that's, that's, it, that's the other thing. I guess I like, I went into like this like long fucking rant, which I do from time to time, but like, that's kind of <laughs> like the... I guess that's what I'm saying is that was like sort of like the original point I was trying to make. Like I wasn't trying to like bolster about like the size of my business or anything. It's not like a, a measurement contest, but I guess I was trying to say is like, like is the deal you're getting even really that good of a deal? Like, right. because they went to an out of state guy who's unknown, who's using all this financing. Like if the deal was so good, 
why didn't some um, uh, local, like, if there really was, because, like, you know, you're probably looking at it like, oh, we're, we're around, like, a 90K difference. We might make 90K on this deal. Like, if that's right. really the case, why didn't the construction company who could do the renovation easier and cheaper, like, why didn't he do it? And, like, you mm -hmm. don't think the guy at the construction company's wife's a realtor or cousin's a realtor? Like, <laughs> you know, why, why, yeah. why, didn't, why didn't they yeah, do you're it, right. right? Right on the money. So, so when we do flips, like, you ain't never going to see no flip video I made uh, where I'm telling people you'll probably make like 200K. I don't do like, I, I, I show you guys reasonable expectations of like flips that we could target for you guys. And you'll probably make like around 20 G's. Um, mm -hmm. And it's up to you if you feel like it's worth your time, energy and effort, but that's not something we can scale out. Like I'm working with a few folks right now. And like, we're like targeting like slow motion flips where we're, we're like going into some of the inner rig suburbs where it's like, when you, once you get out of Cleveland, you go to the first level of suburbs, like the lowest suburbs where owner occupied buyers drive the price points. And what, what you see in those markets is you see um, they, they were owner occupied homes, probably the first home that that particular person who lived there ever owned. And then when they get a couple more kids or they get a little bit more money, they move to the higher end suburbs. So like we're talking right. like suburbs where the ARV is like 150. Okay. So like, you know, you move in there have a couple more kids and you're doing better in your job. And now you buy a $300,000 home in one of the nicer suburbs. And they ended mm -hmm. up opting not to sell those homes. And they just slapped a tenant in there, but these are not professional landlords. And what they end up doing is they slap their tenants in there at like 800 bucks a month. And then a few years later, they decide they just want to sell it. And then they try to sell it for what the properties are normally selling for in those markets, mm -hmm. which is like the 130, 140, 150. Uh, and they find that they can't sell it because there's a tenant in there. The only people that are paying that price are people that want it to be A, fresh, and B, live there with their family. Well, people that are trying to live there with their family can't live there because there's a tenant. And then landlords, guys like us, who are trying to buy cash flow. We ain't going to pay $150,000 for $800 in rent because I can get you $800 in rent for like 50 k right? So like yeah. we slide in there and you end up picking the property up uh, after many, many offers go out. And a lot of people will tell you no, but they trickle in like, three, four, five, six months down the road because, uh, you know, they're slowly realizing like, oh, I can't sell this. And the realtor they usually hire is the realtor that, that sells them their own personal home in these suburbs who doesn't, doesn't work with rental properties either. And like, everybody thinks like, you know, you sell real estate, you sell a rental property the same way you sell a regular house. You just pull the comps and that must be what it sells for. No, dude, yeah, totally, no. No, it's totally different when that tenant's in there. So like it takes time and they eventually get beaten down and they sell their property at a loss. And then that's when, you know, we could swoop in there and then you got to run it for a rental for like six months or however long is left on the lease. And then maybe you ride the tenant out, get their rent up a little bit. And then when they move, since you got to do a turnover anyway, mm -hmm. economies of scale, then you do your renovation, then you exit it and you might get like a nice 15, 20 K pay day like that that's like real life that's like things that we can do but that is a never gonna be a 30 to 50 a month huge business so like you know that's i just it is what it is right that's just like what's possible right. like when i do flips with people i try to explain that and some people they're like fuck yeah that's sweet let's do that other people right. are like oh i thought i was gonna start this massive empire and, and yeah i just don't see that happening <laughs> so uh that's that I go back to for you, and I, I think I think if you're gonna do the flips again, the only way to do it is you got to build that ground up. You got to immerse yourself in the construction industry, and you got to do that shit in California. But if you're gonna yeah. do real estate investing out of state, I think I think you should just use your money as a down payment. Just get some cash flow and rentals. Let those tenants quadruple your money. Right, bank puts in three three pieces of the pie. You only put in the one. I mean, to me that seems simple and easy. And if you're doing like the nicer ones, like when you do sell, you could possibly, like when you get to the point where like maybe you had tenants in there for like 10 years and you've held on to the property for 10 years, you have two options like when your tenant leaves, right? You could do like a moderate renovation to get it ready for the next tenant, or you could go balls to the wall, get it ready for an owner occupant, mm. and you could probably sell it at that owner occupant price. But if you do that, to do that, you have to be in one of those markets where the owner occupants drive prices and they drive prices up, right? Because the right. owner occupants in some of these markets pay prices that make the properties not make sense for investors but if you get the the lower the real cheap like the the, the c grade stuff like in cleveland itself right like where we're doing like all in for like 65 75k and you're renting mm. it for a thousand like that's cool but you got to remember when you do exit okay the still the only guys that are buying those are probably going to be 
you're investor buyers. So you'll never be able to shoot right. that price up because like owner occupants in those, those types of markets, right? Very tough to sell to owner occupants because you're dealing with a lot of credit challenge people, right? They're getting the lowest possible right. mortgage. Banks already mm -hmm. don't like those mortgages. And our housing stock here in Cleveland is, it's like a hundred years old, probably similar to Indiana. And like you take a first time credit challenged home buyer, they're probably using an FHA loan. Well, yeah. there's three things that don't mix well in the same drink. FHA loan, cheap houses, 100-year-old houses, and you'd have all three, right? So that's why mm -hmm. you would want to go to the suburbs on your, on your exit point if you're trying to max it out. But if you're just going for like pure cash flow, I would say like the C, the C grade stuff of duplexes and quads. Yeah. I would probably just hammer that if I were you, bro. I'm talking like all in like 80, 90K, 1500 bucks a month in rent. Mm -hmm. uh, you put down 25, the bank loans you 75. Do that yeah. shit 18 times. Was what did I do? I did the math. There is 450 grand out of your pocket, but you have mm -hmm. a 1.8 million dollar portfolio, and you slap Section 8 tenants in there. It's about as smooth as you can make a 1.8 million dollar C class uh, portfolio run. So, right. Yeah. Right. That's 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 where I would be at if I were you. Hit me. What you got? I, no, I love it, man. I think that's great. I think uh, honestly, that that was kind of that's like my main goal right here that for our call today you know was to look at it because i was watching some of the the, the like i said some of the some of the uh, shows that you had and uh i see some really good deals and i'm like that's perfect talking about a mortgage that's i'm kind of like you know uh it, it's it's new to me because i went into indie with hard money and stuff like that and just cash out of pocket so now doing the mortgages um I'm, I'm 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 interested in that you know like i was literally looking at i was talking to my wife a minute ago right before our call and i said okay I liked what you said about, I'd rather get 36 checks than nine checks, <laughs> you know? So going right. for quads, going for triplexes and just putting a mortgage on it, leveraging the bank's money. I think that's a good start. You know, yeah, that makes sense. And then there you could be in the C grade neighborhoods. And then like, yeah, when you do exit, you're going to exit to other investors, but it's a, it's a quad. You're mainly going to only exit to investors anyway. Now, yeah. one thing to, to set proper expectations. Uh, I, yes, I love quads, 36 checks versus nine checks is amazing. But uh, for that, it's also going to be a process that will take time, okay? I won't be able to like build you a massive portfolio of quads in like six months because our housing stock, right? You take the C grade neighborhoods, right. we got a bunch of single families and we have like a bunch of duplexes, right? We have a, a lot of both of those. As far as four unit buildings, just when they built all these buildings here, they did not build uh, that many of them, okay? So mm -hmm. to target only quads, yes, we could do it. But at any given point in time, there's only like a couple on the market, right? Like in a lot of the, like the, the nice C grade neighborhoods of Cleveland I work in, like probably right now, if we were to pop on the MLS, there'd probably be like, I don't know, like 90 to 100 duplexes on the market. But there might only be like three quads on the market, right? And wow. if, those, if those quads okay. were appropriately priced, my fucking ass would have sold them bitches already, right? So, <laughs> right, right. Uh, you got you to gotta remember that. So I just want to set up the expectations that like when quads come on the market, A, you're going to have to move quick, and B, there will, there, there will be competition. And right now, what we're seeing in the C-grade uh, neighborhoods is they're selling for like, uh, I don't know, like 50 to 55-ish per unit, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at around like 2 to two and, 215, 2 and a quarter, stuff like that. Um, wow. But yeah, those are solid investments. Will like you uh, have so much cash flow flowing through your door when they're leveraged like that on a daily basis where you're just like, yay, let's quit everything. Mm -hmm. Probably not. But like, dude, the, the name of the game there is we spent 450K and then when we retire, we have $1.8 million. And like, do we have right. to sell them? No, we could cash out, refinance them again. Right. right. That, that's the name of the game, the long term play. Um, so if, if you're wanting action and, and you're wanting to, to move and, and you're a guy who would get bored of the business, if like, it's like we do a little bit and then you do nothing for like eight months. And then like, I send you another deal. I'm not saying it's that far, but like, if you want some more action, I would open it up to duplexes and quads. Um, okay. And yeah. then typically you're able to get the duplex units at a price per unit, a little bit lower than, than the quads, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere between like 80 and 100K is usually what we're able to put these duplex uh, deals together for, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the quads are trending like two to two and a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. So it's usually 50 is like the basement. 
and like it goes up from there per unit. But whereas the duplexes go, sometimes we're in the low 40s, right? It's just because you know it's supply and demand. There's just so many on the market as well, right? The, right. You know what I'm saying? So I I would consider opening opening it up to both of them, uh, if if it were me to, to get to get some more action, get get your feet wet more, and uh, yeah. you know make some things happen. But of course. Like the the way that that works too, like when we do that, right? You have like two ways to buy from us. Um, mm. Option A is the investment properties for sale show. Uh, that's the show where either the property that's being sold to you, it's going to come with a full video tour, and it's either something that Holton Wise owns or somebody has hired Holton Wise to sell as their listing agent. And we do the video tours and we sell them on that show. Uh, that show gets emailed to you guys. Like we do the one o'clock email, which I'm sure you're probably getting, right? You get the email from me every day at one o'clock, right? So every day when you get yeah. that email, you either get an episode of that show where it's say for sale, or you get like a highlight of the MLS show. Um, so that would be one way. And then when you see something you like, you just have to bid like email uh, and know though that like, you know, there's a lot of people watching my shows. Uh, so like, you're probably always going to be a multiple offers and it's not like those are catered to you. It's just like whatever we're selling goes out. But then the other option you could do is the MLS show. And that's the show where like I, I take guys' criteria and like the plan that you've developed and stuff. And like, I go out there and I work the market for you and you only. And I find the deals listed by all Ooh, the other yeah. agents. And then I bring okay. them to you. So like me and you, we've been spending this time right now, hammering down the plan of attack. So like, if I were you, that would probably be the plan of attack. I would open it up yeah. to two and four units in like the C grade neighborhoods. And then people go in and they get the packs. So like, you know, there's like the two pack, the three pack, the 10 pack or whatnot. And it's like, you have an account, you have an account bank. It's like all your criteria, what we talked about, what you're looking for. And then I go out there and like, as deals become available that meet your needs, I shoot them to you. I try to give you like a heads up based upon what your criteria is of like when you can expect the videos from me. Um, you know, but it's, and that's just like, you know, I do this all the time and I, I do probably 30, 40 videos a week total, right? So that's just like, based on like how like one in a million or how common your criteria is, I try to give you like right. an expectation of like when you'll get deals from me, but like as we're at the mercy of like what's available, right? Like it might like hit you with like four right away, then it'd be like a three week dead period. And then I hit you with some, you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. if you were to only do quads, cool. But I just want you to know that like, it's not going to be like, all right, man, Lytle, every Friday, I'm going to get you a quad. Like, there just won't be enough supply uh, for Got that it. to happen, right? So right. that's where we're at with that. I like that MLS show one. I think that one's really great. So you actually pull the deals. And because you're you're an agent, right, you get you get the deals, right, as soon as they come available. Is that, is that how that works? Correct, yes. Uh, those mm -hmm. are ones where I, I pull them right off the MLS, and I only will ever show – uh, a, a property on that show if it's not my listing, right? I won't double dip. I won't be like, hey, Lionel, thanks for paying me to do the MLS show. Check out this sweet-ass property that I've already been paid to sell. <laughs> no, like, I, I only right, do, right. like, all my stuff is available for free. You don't have to pay for that. Like, just go watch those shows. But, like, yeah, I only do stuff that other people are selling. And, like, you know, and that's not like I'm a dual agent or nothing. That's just, like, I work for you. I work for you alone. The videos, they go out to you privately. Like every video you've ever seen, like those shows are like probably like 60, 90, 120 days old. Like it goes private. Oh, okay. pri yeah. Private yeah. link. Uh, it's not like you pay me to do the show and then I publish it live and all these other people bid on it. No, it goes to you privately. And then after the property sells, that's when I release it. Oh, okay. Obviously gotcha. it, the, the show sells more shows. Uh, right. So I'm of course going to release it, but like it goes to so like me and you, I might send you a show in June. And then we work on the deal. We close the deal in July. And then like August or September is probably when I get around to releasing them live. So everybody else can see yeah. it. It's like when people are watching that show, they can't bid on those properties. Those properties ain't for sale no more. Uh, so gotcha. that, that's probably uh, the route I, I, I would take. But again, I don't, if you want to only do quads, I think that's totally cool. I just want to make sure that I set the right expectations. I don't want you thinking then mm -hmm. I, I, uh, there's, I will be able to get them to you in a super frequent uh, basis. The only way to do that is to open it up to the, the duplexes and the quads. But yeah, man, I, I think that's good. And I would go section eight on all those too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah dude, the more I do this business and the longer I've been in the game, uh, I've really gravitated towards section eight on anything that's in Cleveland proper. Um, it's just, 
it's a lot of logistics uh, in red tape, like getting the first tenant in there and dealing with mm -hmm. the Section 8 company. But like right. you really eliminate uh, the biggest problem with C grade or less lower income type folks. Because, uh, you know, everybody's got their their phraseology that they utilize for these neighborhoods to, to wrap it in a bow that makes it sound cool and not risky. But like, mm -hmm. like let's just be real. Like these C grade neighborhoods, are they like so dangerous that like we won't work them? No, not at all. Uh, are the tenants manageable? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, these are still people who are paying like six fifty, seven hundred, seven hundred fifty dollars for their shelter, right? These are not people that have ten grand in the bank. They don't have five right. grand in the bank, right? They're one bad life occurrence. They're a flat tire on the car. They're uh, breaking up with their boyfriend, right? They're losing their job right. away from not having rent money, right? So the longer I do this, the more I want to make sure I'm protected by having that government guaranteed rent. So I always, yeah. I always rock the Section 8 program on all of those. That's that's like, that's my MO on those. When I first got into right. the business, like Section 8 was so difficult to work with because it really is, man. It sucks. It's like, mm. I mean, everybody knows working with the government is never smooth. Um, right. So like I avoided it. Uh, but the longer I got in the business, like if you figure the system out, it, it works better. It's just, it's worth it in the long run. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm just looking into that myself. Like, uh, you know, I got turned on to, what was it? Go section eight and you can list your properties there and go through the process. But I, I, you know, I, at first I was kind of shunning away from it cause I just wasn't knowledgeable about it. But now I see that, you know, because I've had tenant turnarounds already, you know, in India. And it's like, I, I've, I've owned that place for a year, you know? And it's like, Gosh, you know, and, and, and just to have that, you know, uh, stability with, uh, you know, the cash flow there would be great. Yeah, and your, your quads, property, I guess, you know. Are your property managers doing all the Section 8 stuff on your behalf out there, or are you self-managing out there with your rentals? No, I, I got a property management company. They, they were having a tough time figuring out Section 8 for whatever reason with that one, so I had to help them. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not a good look. That's not good. Right. Yeah, you you want to make – I here's just one other tidbit. Like, I feel like when people go to markets, they always try to, like – find like the uh, i feel like new investors they they want to work with the property manager where it's like the one or two man show because like they get the property manager's cell phone and like for whatever reason it makes all these investors feel like they're getting a better service right right you're fucking not you're getting a fucking <laughs> guy like the owner of the company's company is so unsophisticated that mm -hmm. it's just him and his show that means like as you get into these things there's situations that he just doesn't know how to handle because like Property management is a tough fucking business, dude. Nobody yeah. that's a one-man show in property management is making any fucking money, dude. Nobody starts mm -hmm. a property management business unless they want to get to like 500 doors at least. And if you're at 500 right. doors, the owner of the business is not the guy that takes everybody's phone call and can't just like text his owners back. So mm -hmm. you're working with the guy like, sure, he knows your name. Sure, he knows your tenant's name. Mm -hmm. But he's not good at running his own business. He's not going to be able to run your business. He doesn't have the resources. Uh, right. So if you were to go with like a, a bigger company, they will handle all the Section 8 on your behalf. Like us, like we do all the Section 8 stuff. So like you, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be posting ads or dealing with any of that. Like we handle everything. And like we have like a fact where we, we explain like how it works to give you like an outlay of like the timelines and the costs associated with all of it, uh, which is on our website. But like the moral of the story is – you should be navigating to find like people get afraid of the big PM companies. Cause they always have this thought that the service is going to be as good or the costs are going to be higher. Like is the service going to be as personal? No, dude, it's mm. not. I have properties that I own that I don't fucking know the names of the tenants. I haven't probably right. been inside of any rentals that I own in the last three years because I'm good mm -hmm. at running the business and it's like scaled out to where like, I don't have to. So like, yeah, I love that. Do you, yeah. you want to put your invest, you want to put all that money into somebody who can't grow their own business, mm -hmm. but he'll take your texts at like nine o'clock on a Saturday or somebody who's <laughs> so good at it that they haven't even been to their own rentals. Cause they, they understand the business. Right. Cause after yeah. you've been doing it for a while, dude, like, you know, it's, you got your systems, your processes in place. There's like no crazy emergencies. Like, dude, everybody's always like, man, I don't want to be a landlord because I don't want to get a 2 a.m. call because the house is on fire. <laughs> Motherfucker, if the house is on fire at 2 a.m., why the fuck would you call me? I don't own a fucking fire truck. What am I going right. to do? That's not an emergency. <laughs> like for me, like 
Exactly. I don't have a fuck. Call the fucking fire station, dog. Like shit. Exactly. So that that's like my thoughts on that, bro. So like, if you do navigate the section eight, I might look into a more sophisticated, uh, bigger company. And it, you know, unfortunately, yeah, you're not gonna be able to text the owner or call the owner on his cell phone. But like, you know, y- you shouldn't be able to if they if they right. have their ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I got I got a question. Another question for you too, because I know you're familiar with indie. Um, I saw that you had a company out there. I think it was FS uh, Realtor or something like that um, uh, out in Indy. What's your take on the differences between Cleveland market, Indy market, um, since you've been in both? Uh, it's six to one, half dozen to the other, man. Um, and to clarify, I do not own investments in Indy. Uh, I've never owned okay. an investment in Indy. Uh, Holton Wise, right? Holton Wise TV. Uh, we have done marketing and exposure uh, for many other similar type companies that uh, gotcha. okay. are in these other markets, okay? Mm-hmm. But I personally do not invest in these other markets because let's go back to the competitive advantages. It would make no sense for me to kick money into that market where I don't have millions and millions of dollars of infrastructure in this market. And if you're asking gotcha. me like, why did I choose Cleveland? Because I grew up here. Like, I, this is that gotcha. if, I, if I was born in Indy, Holton Wise would be the exact same company you see but it'd be in Indy, uh, gotcha. just, just where I'm from. And I do not believe that you are going to get X amount of more profit in this market versus this market or some of the other like similar Midwestern markets. Like you're in like Metro Detroit okay. and everybody freaks out about like Detroit, like Metro Detroit, like the suburbs right. and whatnot. Like, dude, that's going to be pretty much the same as Cleveland, Kansas City, Indy. They're all the same. It, it's where are you comfortable with the companies you've met? Uh, like there's no like super secret hot market where like all these investors are making this money. Nobody's they're, they're all gonna, it's all gonna be a wash. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That, that was another one, a big question I had too, cause I was curious about, you know, where, where can I get the highest ROI? You know, that's, that's my biggest thing since we're, since I'm looking to do cash flow, where, where you know, what's, what's the best markets to go in. I think, I think you're right. From what I've seen everywhere in the Midwest, it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same. Yeah. And I, I, I think you'll get your best cash flow. Uh, not choosing a market, but like choosing what you buy in the market, making mm-hmm. sure you don't mm-hmm. make mistakes like overpaying for the property, which is another reason that I advocate buying property with a loan. Back to the $100,000 property, phantom property right. example that I've created for you. You buy a property for a hundred grand, you know, Lionel's risking 25 grand of Lionel's money, but mm-hmm. Lionel's also risking $75,000 of the bank's money. The bank ain't going to let you fuck their money up, dude. So right, they're, they're right. going to make sure that the deal ain't overpriced. Cause like, dude, to be real with you, uh, real estate's very complicated, but if, if you bake it down into its simplest form, it's a simple thing in that if you buy a house for what it's worth at the end of the day, it's not going to be a bad investment. Even if you cash right. flowed zero dollars, if you bought a hundred thousand dollar house, it's worth a hundred thousand dollars. And then over 30 years, you see like, the average appreciation rate in America, which is like 2% or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that your tenant paid off three fourths of that mortgage for you. Like, you know, you can't actually lose, lose, lose. Right. But where you can okay. lose is if you don't understand what you bought, maybe you thought you're getting a stable investment, but it was a risky investment, or mm-hmm. you found out that you paid 20 K more than what other people are paying and you're going to take the 20 mm-hmm. K wash. So like, uh, you know, I would first figure out like, you know, what market you're comfortable with, people that are, are leading in the right direction. And I'm not trying to poo-poo on um, Indy. Uh, and I don't know anything about the people you've been working with in Indy other than what you've just told me. But just looking on the surface of the scribbles that I wrote on this paper, like I do not like what you got going on with that flip there. I just, yeah, I, I don't, I question like why they thought that made sense, why it took so long, why they got you into that deal. I, you know, there's a lot of red flags on that particular flip for me mm-hmm. that would make me question working with those people. And I don't want to know who they are. I'm not going to talk about them. Cause right, again, right. I'm only hearing <laughs> what you're telling me. And yeah. I'm sure like, you know, over six months, a lot of stuff happens. I just heard like a, a quick story, but like mm-hmm. to me, uh, that seems like a lot of higher risk stuff trying to overcomplicate a lot of things that really shouldn't be that complicated. And then your PM in India, I don't know if it's the same person, but 
uh, if they're having to personally ask you to personally go look into Section 8 for them, like how uh, sophisticated or experienced of a, an actual business are they? Like that'd be like you asking me how to do coding if, you, if I hire you to do IT for me, right? Like right. or something right. of that, like, yo, James, do you, can you teach me Java or something? Like that would make <laughs> no sense, right? So right. That, that's just, you know, from looking at it from far away, that's the experiences I got. So I, I would figure out like who you like working with in any of these markets, whether it's my company in my market uh, or some of these other markets, but like a sophisticated property management company with a lot of doors, who's got a lot of systems in place, and who's just trying to be transparent, dude. It's real estate. Like, I don't need to convince you that real estate makes money, bro. Everybody knows real estate makes money. So right. Like, the product should sell itself. They should focus their efforts on giving you a transparent look at what the business will actually be like if you get into it. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's, I agree. That's my thoughts, bro. I, I, I agree with you, man, 100%. I, you know, I had some red flags at one point now, but now they're really showing. And uh, so I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we had this conversation. Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just saying, I said, you know, this is a good call because I'm glad what you, you brought out a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that I was thinking about, you know, and, and kind of solidified that when it came to, you know, the company I'm using and things like that. So, but again, you know, I mean, it's like, you're, you're, you're right. You hit it. I'm kind of wanting to sink my teeth into this business because I really like it. You know, it's like one of those things I've grown to like love over the years. Sure. And on top of IT, I, you know, I want to do, you know, more real estate. But I think step one is to create that cash flow so I can retire my wife <laughs> and then move forward. So I'm going to look at, you know, you said you in your uh, uh, under the MLS stuff that you do, it's a package deal that you have to get. Yeah. So like, uh, it starts with, you could either do one property or you could do a two, a three, uh, a four or a 10 pack. Most people get the 10 pack because it's cheaper. It's uh, it's two grand for a 10 pack. So what that would be is uh, I get your criteria, which I feel like after this call, I have a good idea of what your criteria is, but I'll like, so you'd go and order the 10 pack and then I would shoot you this email, like with a bunch of boilerplate questions that I have to get to know you. Cause most, most of the time, like, I'm going in cold. Like that's what I'm going off of. Like, right. Uh, sometimes I talk to people for an hour before they do these. Sometimes I don't. Uh, so just like you go into depth on exactly what you want. And like what I've kind of laid out to you, that might not necessarily be exactly what you want to do. So like maybe you sit on this conversation and think about it and then think about preconceived stuff and then tell me like what you want to do. So you'd like reply in that email uh, with what it is you want. And then based on what you want, I'll give you like an estimation of like how soon I think it'll be when I get you your first set of videos. And then from there, okay. I usually get you like between like one and three videos, depending on like how many properties were available at that time that I thought would make sense based upon all of our conversations. And then I send you the videos, you watch the videos, and then sometimes you want to buy the properties. So me and you work together uh, to put in offers uh, or sometimes you don't want to buy the properties. Then you tell me why. And then I adjust uh, what I'm doing the next time I send you a pack of videos. And then gotcha. we just kind of like navigate through that process, uh, a set of videos at a time. And like, like I said, most people, they do the 10 pack and uh, you know, usually within like the first 90 days, we probably have like, you know, a good four or five properties, like already like under contract and closed. And then like they kick the property management over to my team. And if there's renovations needed, my team, we do all that. And like on my FAC, uh, we have like video tutorials of like, um, how our renovation process works, when you get the bid, how long the bid will take. Everything is just transparent, right? Because again, I, got it's it. fucking real estate. I got nothing to fluff. It's just like, yo, this is what it is. And like, this is how we do it. This is, this is what you could expect. And if uh, you think that's cool, this is what it costs and let's rock or let's not rock. So uh, that, right. that, that's what most people do um, uh, as we work together. So like, if you're trying to do like the quads, just remember again, if you do do that, it would probably take me like a year to like 18 months to actually produce and send you uh, 10 total quads to evaluate. Cause just Got the, you. The, um, the inventory is so low. And like when I identify a video, just so, or like when I identify a property for you, just so you're aware, like, I'm like, oh, this property will work for Lionel 
I analyze it. And then within 24 hours of my team filming me in the video, you get the video. So like, if I tell you, it'll it'll probably be like two weeks for for me to get the video. It's not like I filmed the video on like the first of the month and then it takes them 13 days to edit it. It's like, it'll Mm. take me that long to like identify it. And then they, they rip it to you the next day. Cause if we did that, you know, it's probably probably going to be available by the time you're ready to see the video. So that's what we do. And again, if, you want to flip or you want to do this or you want to do that. It's, it's like pretty much whatever you want to do. Uh, I go out and I find properties the closest fit that. And I, I cut it to you straight, bro. I'd be like, yo, I think if you do this deal, this is what you should pay. This is what I think the seller will do. And we just talk about yeah. it and uh, you make the move from there. Or if like a wholesaler sends you a deal, you get to send that into me and I'll just analyze those deals for you. Um, but yeah, that's how okay. we do it. Awesome. Cool, All right, man. man. Well, I love yeah. that. All right, brother. So great call. Uh, if you ever need anything, you know where to find me. And uh, if you decide Definitely. you want to do business out here, you know how to find me. And if you decide you got uh, more questions or whatever, you, you know, let's do this again, man. Take care. All right. Thanks, James. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.